Welcome everybody. This is my very first episode for my podcast. So yesterday I posted uh, on my community tab where I asked my subscribers whether I should do podcast every now and then and all of the comments said yes I should do them. So here it is. Before I begin, I just want to say that this is something completely new to me. So I am not the best, I'm not the very best at doing doing a podcast on my own uh, channel. I am trying my best to do it uh, to do it enjoyable <laughs> for you guys if that makes sense. So uh, this is a podcast. You don't need to watch the video. You can just listen to it while relaxing or uh, doing uh, something. And the videos that I will talk about in this video and this podcast will be listed in the description box because I will mention I will add some uh, screenshot or not screenshot clips of my previous videos and previous live streams. All right, enjoy it, guys. This all started way back in June 2019. I was in a live stream with other people talking about how much I love the horror community, how supportive these people were and whatnot. And then someone said that, oh, you are, yeah, like you are a brilliant supporter. And then, and then the same person who said that told me you, I should do a horror narrations. And then I thought to myself, you know what, since I do Photoshop art, why not upload this on my YouTube channel? And Every, pretty much everyone was being encouraging and supportive to me. And this is where I uploaded my very first video. But keep in mind, it isn't a time-lapse art video that I typically do. It was more like a slideshow where I showcase my previous artworks when I was a beginner. So people have an idea on what type of art uh, I do. Also, as you can see in, in this video, my channel name, my channel's name used to be called Asia 1994. And this is the very, f my very first step banner ever. And then I changed it to Asia 1994 Digital Art. And then finally, I settled up with the name Arzale Asia. The story behind it isn't very interesting, however, because I went to a website where it generates a username. So you type a keyword. And then it, gener it generates different types of usernames for you know YouTube, not only YouTube, any social media. And then I just typed art, and then I was, uh, I was hesitant whether I should choose art hype or Ar Arzilla. And then I decided to, to to ask my friend which one do you think sounds uh, better, which one uh, is more interesting. And then she said art art hype doesn't sound that interesting, so Arzilla sounds way way better. And I couldn't agree more, honestly, because art hype to me, I don't know, it sounded boring and too generic. Arzilla sounded way, way better. So this is where I chose official name for my channel. Next thing I want to talk about is in details, in depth and details, what, where I take ideas and inspirations for my artworks. I have noticed that the majority of my artworks are either inspired by uh, soundtracks from video games or specific overall like uh, an overall video games or sometimes like a specific levels from video games and and sometimes i take inspirations from other artists from deviant art for the for yeah from deviant art mostly and I'm the type of person when I listen to music, whether it is uh, a song or music from a video game on YouTube, I would visualize an artwork. I know this may sound strange to some people, but this is where I get my inspiration from. Like, for example, um, my latest uh, artwork, The Wicked Witch, I was listening to White Zombie Super... There's a specific so song called Super chart seven or something to that effect and that song actually inspired me to do horror art is more specifically wicked witch artwork and another example is i saw we i was playing wild west not too long ago and i came across this uh, level with the spooky vibes to it i don't know the name of it but i i'm planning to do artwork and actually based on that level you know like the environment and the color scheme and sometimes I just take ideas from other artists on deviant art. I just browse others, other people's artworks. And sometimes I just use my own imagination. 
my own imagination when I do my artworks. My next point is what I struggle with as an artist. Basically, there are times where uh, you just don't know what to do or what what to do with your art or you just don't know what to create. It's it's either your your brain is completely empty and you just can't decide what to do. Or uh, there are so many ideas in your mind, you just don't know what to do either. And when I and there are times where no matter how hard I try to create artwork, it just doesn't turn out the way I want. In this case, uh, and in this case, I just uh, remind myself like it's okay to have one of those days. It happens to many artists, and I don't pressure myself. And instead, I just take short break, and it does help me like ninety nine percent of that of the time because not gonna lie it does whenever i have those days i feel insecure a bit and i feel like i'm not good enough of an artist but then i realize it's okay it happens to many artists and the best to me the way i deal with it is i take a short break by doing other uh, other activities and it does help me a lot that's why that's why i take short breaks every now and then now I'm gonna talk about adding commentary to my art videos. This all started around last year and I remember when I did the video, my very first video with commentary on a, on a regular video, you know, not, uh, not a live stream. Because uh, last time, last year I did a small haul video where I show you, where I show my subscribers what I got from Geek, a gaming and movies merchandise uh, st uh, shop. So I was uh, very, like, I was really, <laughs> really anxious about uh, doing it because it's something that I have never done before. I would record, re-record, redo every time and feel so anxious, stutter. And I would watch like small haul videos on YouTube just so, just so I encourage myself. And then I finally made it. And then I just, I posted a poll on my community tab. After I would say after like a few months of posting that video, I posted a poll on my community tab where I asked my subscribers whether I should do commentary on my art video, not throughout the entire entirety of the video, just in the intro where I just. You know, like briefly, briefly uh, explain what inspired me to do the artwork, where I got my idea from, what I uh, struggled with when I did the artwork and whatnot. And then this, uh, and back then I used to feel so so nervous. And then when I started doing it more and more, I started to get used to it. And now, if I'm gonna compare like myself with. Last year, I would say my commentary have Im has improved dr drastically. Yes, I still get anxious every now and then, but not as bad as uh, before. And if you are struggling with that, I believe in you. <laughs> you got this. You can uh, do it. You just need to practice and do it your own way. Which brings me to my uh, next point. Now I'm going to talk about uh, how I like to edit my videos and whatnot. Me personally, I don't like taking, I don't like copying other people's style of editing, uh, you know, how I do with my commentary and these things. Yes, I do take, to me, I just take ideas, look at ideas from other people and then do it my, I do, then do it my way, do my own version of it. Like, for example, when I did my, my setup video, my PC, gaming PC setup video, when I the way I edited my video, I actually took uh, ideas from other videos, but then I decided to do my own version of it. The way I do it. The same thing with my art videos, uh, you know, live streams. I like to do it my way. I don't like <laughs> copying others people. To me, like if you want to, you know, yeah, you can take ideas from uh, other people, but then do it your way. And to be honest, it's really boring when. It's really boring when someone use when like group people use the same exact type of font, same exact editing uh, style, same way of doing commentary. It's honestly hard to find YouTube channels, content creators that are unique, you know, underrated, different. They do stuff their own way instead of copying other people. All right, now I'm gonna talk about my live streams, specifically gaming streams. When I uh, 
when I started streaming on YouTube, I actually did the live streams without any commentary. Basically, gaming gaming streams without commentary. And the main reason why, because I was concerned that people will make fun of my voice or the way I talk. Because uh, I know... I know I'm not trying to fish for comments. I'm just saying the stuff that I have, that I used to struggle with back then for all like for all my for all my life. I hope it makes sense because because I was self-aware about my voice, my accent, the way I talk, and uh, and you know stuff that I say. I I used to like. You know, like when you say, when they say that you work on an eggshell, this is exactly how I was back then when I started uh, streaming. And then when I finally decided to do a stream with commentary, it was back in June 2021 when I did Q2, not one, but two Q&A live stream where I, because at that time I wanted to celebrate my channel's two year anniversary where I do Q and A stream, so my subscribers ask me uh, questions and and I I uh, answer them, and again it took me lots lots of courage uh, to do it actually. Okay, now I'm um, speaking about uh, streams. I will talk about how I did my very first gaming stream with commentary. This is honestly a unique situation for me because typically most people, when they do a game live stream for the very first time with commentary, they get anxious, they feel nervous uh, and stuff like that. But to me, no. At that time, around August uh, 20, 2021, I was out with my family at the cinema. After we finished watching the movie, on on my way home, I was like, you know what? Today I wanna do. I wanna do a live a gaming stream with commentary, and I'm not even joking. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't anxious. I just uh, launched the game, launched the stream, and just started the streaming. Oh my god, this is really a unique. Like this is definitely something different. That happened uh, to me. I wasn't expecting that at all. The stream was completely unplanned, and this is where it all started. And then after that, to me, it started something like a never-ending circle f for me. Every time I, I want to stream, before I stream, feel anxious, start the stream, and then feel even more anxious. And then as soon as I start talking to um, to my viewers, I don't feel anxious and nervous anymore. I just feel uh, normal. Like back at when I was a beginner, I would get so freaking anxious. Like, oh my God, what should I say? If I say this, people will think I am weird. Like I used to take myself very seriously because if you actually watch my older gaming streams with commentary and compare it to now, I would say I... I am proud of myself that I don't take myself very seriously when I do live streams. I just like to you know, joke around, have fun, because this is how it's supposed to be. It's not meant to be taken very seriously. It's how I keep my mind, you know, occupied. So, especially since I deal with anxiety and depression, this thing keeps me occupied. Especially when I chat with you guys or when I play with uh, someone else. It does help me so much. Right now, I do feel uh, anxious every now and then when I go live, but not as bad as before. Now I feel more confident, more comfortable. I don't take myself very uh, seriously, and it's something that I am very uh, proud of doing. Also, I have something else that I uh, struggle with for a long, long time, and I still struggle with it to this day. It's that, for instance, I uh, when I sent... DM to someone asking them something or asking them, oh, can I, can we play a specific game someday together? Every single time I do that to someone that I trust, even if the person is really nice, my brain will be like, oh my God, I am being annoying to them. They must think I am weird asking them that I want to play, you know, a game uh, together. I don't know, is it because of my anxiety or... Or what? And there are times where, not where I mean, there are times where I would feel like I am a loser, I am an awkward person. Because ever since I was a teenager, I always thought like this to myself. That, oh, I'm just an awkward person, a loser, I, I am boring and lame, and, some, and if I... Uh, 
if I talk in my streams or others stream express my you know express myself or just you know joke around after a while that like the same day or the next day I will tell myself oh my god was I being obnoxious maybe I was too obnoxious maybe they I wasn't you know funny maybe I was being annoying and the circle continues it's like a never-ending circle for me so I don't know maybe because again maybe because of my anxiety and this is something that I'm trying to how do I say it? like something I'm trying to cope with to this day I don't even know if I'm making sense or not, but you get the picture. Like, it's something that I have been struggling for a long time, and I still struggle with this uh, to this day. Like, there are times where I feel confident. I don't think to myself that, oh, I am obnoxious, annoying, I am a fucking loser, and stuff like that. And then there are times... There are times where I'm not confident. Every time I talk to someone, I instantly think that, oh, am I being annoying? Am I being obnoxious? Or maybe I am being a weird uh, to them. So I don't know. Like, I, I know I try, I try my best not to think that, like that to myself. And I just constantly remind myself that you guys love me for who I am. You guys love me because I am, you know, I am good enough. I am nice person to you guys. And the same to you. You guys are awesome people and really supportive uh, friends. I'm so happy to have you all. That's about it for today, guys. Thank you so much for listening, guys. It means the world to me. Thank you, seriously. Big thanks to everyone for listening and watching the video. You guys are truly the best. I'm so happy to have amazing supporters and friends like you guys. All of you are amazing, breathtaking people, the kindest people I have ever met in my life. And you guys truly make me happy. And you, I actually consider you my second family as well. So grateful to have you all. It's always a pleasure seeing you in my comments and in my chat. I can't, I can't wait. And I always, always look forward to see you all in my chat, in my streams, and in the comment section, sections as well. If you, if you have any question or if you want to chat with me, you are struggling with something you need to help with your channel, please don't hesitate to message me on my social media. All my social media will be linked in the description box. I love you so much, guys, and you all are the best, and I will see you all later. I wish you all a great day.